In this video tutorial, we'll walk you through all the steps you need to take to register a simple widget for translation with WPML. Let's start by going to an existing page and clicking on Edit with Elementor. In Elementor, we'll add a simple widget from a plugin that is not compatible with WPML out of the box. In case you're wondering, a simple widget is a widget that has fixed fields and no repeater fields. In our example, the widget only has a name. Let's click on the plus icon to translate a post with the widget in WPML's Advanced Translation Editor and see what happens. As expected, the only text available for translation is the name of the widget. This is because the widget isn't registered for translation with WPML. So, to register the widget for translation with WPML, we need to go to WPML Settings and temporarily set the Classic Translation Editor as the default translation editor for new translations. Now, we'll scroll down to the Custom Fields Translation section and click on Show System Fields. Next, we search for Underscore Elementor and look for the Underscore Elementor Underscore Data Custom Field. The field is set to copy once and locked because usually there's no need to translate the field. But in this case, we'll temporarily set it to Translate and save our changes. Now, let's go back to our post and make a small change to it. We'll just add a plus sign to the title, update the post and click to edit the translation. We're doing this because in the Classic Translation Editor, we'll be able to see the serialized array for the underscore Elementor underscore Data field. This is the information we need for our XML code. Let's copy it. Then, in a new tab, we'll go to unserialize.com and paste it into the input box. After clicking on Unserialize, we can clearly see how the widget is outputting the content. If we scroll through the array, we can see the widget type. This is important because it tells us what the name of the widget is. It's also how the system recognizes which plugin the widget comes from. Our widget name is WPR Advanced Text. We're going to copy it. A quick look at the WPML documentation shows us that now we need to go ahead and add some code to our WPML config.xml file. We'll copy the example code from the documentation and use it as a baseline. Now, let's go to WPML settings, Click on the Custom XML Configuration tab and paste the example code. In the code, let's locate the widget type and in place of heading, paste the name of our widget. In case you don't remember, our widget name is WPR Advanced Text. It's usually enough to add the widget name next to the widget type, but sometimes you also have to replace the heading text next to field type with the name of your widget. Once we save the changes, we're going to go back to editing our post with Elementor. This isn't a necessary step, but if you look at the information in the left sidebar, you can better understand which fields of the widget you need to wrap in a fields tag. Next to the field type in the code, we can also see the editor type. This is a type of the text field used in the Classic Translation Editor. There are different value possibilities like line, area, link and visual. We'll explain these options in more detail later. For now, let's input prefix text as the field type. 
This is just a type of text, also known as a label. We'll speed the video up as we adjust the example code for our other fields. Now, let's define the editor type values in a bit more detail. Line stands for regular, single line text field. Area stands for a text area field with multiple lines. Link just stands for a link, while visual stands for what you see is what you get editor. The editor type field is optional and the value reverts to line if a different value isn't input. If you want to use a value other than line, it's best to take a look at the values that widget uses. To do this, let's go back to the edit screen in Elementor and see the type of text fields our widget has. The prefix text is a line field type, while animated text is a text area field type. Suffix text is also a line field type and link is self-explanatory. We don't have a visual field type. We'll just quickly add the correct labels to the code now. If you have a link field type, you might see link text directly followed by the URL. In this scenario, the XML code doesn't have to be adjusted. However, it's more common to have a different structure where the URL is inside another array. Let's go back to our custom XML code and see if we have key off next to the link field type, followed by the URL. Yes, we do. Key off gets the text link. So we need to input text link right after key off. That's all we need to do to register our widget for translation, so we can save the changes to the custom XML configuration now. Back in the multilingual content setup tab, we can switch back to using the advanced translation editor as our default translation editor. Then, in the Custom Fields Translation section, we need to set the translation preferences of the underscore elementor underscore data custom field back to copy once. Now, we can go back to our post and make a small change to it again and update the changes. And now, we can see the widget elements we registered available for translation in the Advanced Translation Editor.